Do you wonder why guys always seem to stop texting you randomly? Isn't it strange how he goes from messaging you 24 seven to being busy for essentially a week straight? We need to stop you from continuing to embarrass yourself, which is why on today's show, we're going to be discussing five texting secrets men cannot resist. That way you can learn how to not only get him to blow up your phone, but also have him desperate to see you in person. So number one is less is more. Texting has not and will never be a way for you to get to know someone. No man is going to actually feel closer to you because you're the best texter. Actually makes it easier for us as men to become bored with you. Because what can he do when you message him all the time? He can ignore you. He can withdraw from you. You need to never forget here that your goal in texting or having communication when you're not with the person is so that you can make it easier getting to meet you in person. You're not going to trick men into being emotionally invested in you by texting him a whole bunch. Let's talk about less is more, especially as it comes to leading up to the date. You want to use texting as a tool to schedule the next in-person meeting. A function of the man being the man means that he has to be intentional. He has to pursue you. He has to say to himself that he has a desire desire to get to know you, but you have to allow him, you, you, you hear what I say? You have to allow him to have that space. You will never be able to stimulate that realization by pounding him with more text, more messages, and more phone calls. Men need space to miss your absence and they need to be able to contrast what it's like to be around you and have you in their life with what it's like to not have you in their life so they can acknowledge that they would rather have you in their life. Let's say you meet a guy at a, an event. You like him. He likes you. He wants to go out on a date with you. After the event happens, you guys are texting and then he says, okay, I would love for us to go out to dinner. Are you available on Friday? And you're like, I, I do have some time on Friday night. This time that you're going to see him in person is your opportunity to extract information from him. You want him to leave seeing you with a particular feeling in his heart and in his spirit. Wow, that was such an interesting date. And also the time I spent with her wasn't long enough. Now, after this date, I want to spend more in-person time. So leading up to that first date, what I want you specifically to be doing is only texting him day by day enough to keep in contact with him and remind him that you're excited about the upcoming date on Friday. See, you're using it as a scheduling tool one, but you're also going to be using it as a way to reassure him that the interest is there. You want there to be anticipation built up to seeing you the next time. And this is where the mistakes come in for some of you is that throughout this time leading up to the date, you're thinking about all the ways you can get to know him before the date. So by the time the date comes, you start to feel like, I don't know if we have that much more to talk about. It kind of feels like there ain't no more to share. People aren't going to say, oh, you know, it was horrible meeting her in person, but talking to her over the phone was so much fun that I feel like I'm going to make her my girlfriend because she's the best phone caller. Now, number two, I want you to be moving at a snail's pace. When you're in a situation ship, or a talking stage and you're building up to it becoming serious. And depending on who he is, he will also be very accustomed to being in relationships where it's very text heavy, especially at the beginning. Men become complacent with texting because they're textaholics. As the man, he has to be able to take initiative. He has to be intentional about you and this relationship. He asks you out. He wants to get to know you more. He takes you out on dates because he wants you and he's the, going to be the pursuer. And he's going to be confused when you're taking a step back. Guys are going to become anxious trying to understand why it is that you're not texting him as much as he's accustomed to other girls texting him. The most desirable version of yourself is someone that is investing and paying attention to you and has so much going on in your life because your life is full that you're not really that concerned with what he's doing or what he wants. Guys become really attracted to you when you're barely paying attention to them. Once they get that confirmation that, oh yeah, you like me, you'll text 
me 24 seven. Okay. On to the next challenge. When you begin to pull back the texting and only using it as a tool, they're going to basically try to guilt you into saying you're a bad person because you're not texting me as much as you should be. So you start getting nervous and saying, Oh my God, no, wait, 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 wait. It's not that I don't like you. I'm sorry for not texting you. I was, I was just busy, but you know, now I'm going to make myself unbusy. I'll, I'll, I'll jump on top of the cell tower so that I get messages extra fast, extra speedy. You get nervous about that. So then you do a complete 180 and you go overboard that you need to be able to use discernment to be able to say to yourself, what's the difference between what you actually want and what best serves you, but won't actually get the best response out of you. So this is why I say it's something that men will tell you they want, but they don't actually want that. You need to pull back on texting unless he's going to text you about the next time he's going to see you. You need to force men's hand by forcing him to make one decision or the other. If you really care that much, if you really want to see me that badly, you will figure out how to see me in person. And you want to make sure you're not giving men the opportunity to continue to talk to you in casual ways that don't require them to have that same amount of intention or initiative. Number three is to be showing and not telling you want to make it very clear to men when you meet them that your life is already full and you already have things going for yourself so that they recognize when they come into your life that they are not bringing sunshine and light. If they were to step out of your life, if they were to not be in your life every day, that doesn't mean that your world stops spinning. You have plenty of things to do, plenty of places to be that he doesn't get to feel like he can just come into it and do whatever he wants because you're, he's all that matters. When you allow men to feel like they're the be all and end all of your life, men will come into your life and start to abuse that. They will realize how powerful they are, that that allows them the freedom to mistreat you, to disrespect you. When he's messaging you, and when you guys are texting back and forth, rather than communicating to him that you have such an interesting full life with a lot of stuff to do by texting him those things, I want you to be strategic about using pictures and videos to show him that you have other things to do in your life. As the moment you show a man that you don't need him and you barely want him, he starts thinking to himself, well, I want to show you how much I want you and prove to you that I'm the man for you. The moment you start worshiping him and the ground that he walks on, he starts saying, eh, is there anyone else I can, I can pursue here? So let's say for the sake of example, that you are someone who loves to paint and you paint every day, whenever you're feeling inspired, rather than telling him that you do things like painting. And I want you to show him with pictures and videos that you're painting a canvas. It does two things. One, it allows him to see why you're not messaging him. It also shows him that you actually have other things going on in your life because then they start to say, I want to be part of your universe. If they were to mess up, you have no problem dropping them because you have plenty of other things going on in your life that require your time and attention. This is something that you can actually send directly to him. So whether he's on social media or not, you can send this directly to him to show him what you've been up to. You can throw in there when you you do text him the things that you've been doing, but instead of just chatting and texting about it, show him pictures and videos of the things that you are doing. And number four, what I want you to do is silence your Shakespeare. I don't want you to make this mistake of trying to be Shakespeare over the phone. When you start thinking to yourself, I should compliment him and tell him how amazing he is, how much I want him so he doesn't think I'm not interested in him. And hopefully when he realizes how into him I am, he'll be more into me. When you give men all of that validation over text, first of all, it's low quality validation. Even in the way that you give the validation, it's less impactful coming over text. What I want you to do is recognize the fact that if a man came to you and he wanted to get to know you, it's because he wants something from you. You're doing the evaluating. 
Think of yourself like the job interviewer. Do you think the job interviewer is going to sit there and tell you all the ways that you're just the best candidate? So because they're offering the job, they're not going to tell you how much they love you. In the real world that we actually live in, men don't actually want you more or desire you more when you communicate all the different ways that you love him so much and you can't get enough of him. You're also going to do that because the men that you're dating or talking to are going to be trying to be Shakespeare with you. I just want you to say thank you. I appreciate that. And don't be worried or anxious that you're not giving him anything in return. For an example, if a guy messages you, hey, uh, so you don't like me anymore? You got too big for me? Just reply, LOL. Say basically nothing. Because a lot of times when guys message those things, they're fishing for compliments or they're fishing for validation. And all he's going to do when you validate him like that, he's going to say, oh, yeah. I am the man. I got that power. Yeah. Yeah. Men play and are addicted to video games for a reason. And video games are structured in the way that they are structured for a reason. Have you ever heard of a popular video game where people start on level 100 with the max attributes, the max resources, and the max respect and money in the game from the very beginning? No, you've never heard of a video game like that. No good video game exists that is void of challenges. And number five is... You contrast the feeling. Everything you're doing here is not just about what you text him on that phone. You need to understand that you're contrasting the feeling he's going to feel about you over text with what he feels of you in person. So in the process, let's say, for example, you meet a guy at this event and he asks you out on a date uh, leading up to the date. You're not really texting much, just kind of keeping conversation enough. You're doing the showing, don't telling. You're not going overboard, doing all the Shakespeare stuff like we talked about. Now, see what has happened throughout the time that he wasn't seeing you in person. He's probably started to feel, damn, she's a little bit busy. She doesn't really text me much. Maybe she's not that interested in me. A little bit of anxiety. Now, when he meets you in person, this is where you focus on coming on this date and doing the one thing that will always yield you great results. Asking really good questions, bringing the energy that I am so fascinated and interested in you, your life, and everything you have to say. Because it does two things for you simultaneously. It makes it easier for you to extract a whole lot of information from him so that you can be better uh, equipped to understand him, understand what his intentions are. And number two is it makes him feel really positive emotions about you and the experience that he's having with you because he's getting to talk about himself. People will only ever feel closer to you when they get an opportunity to talk about themselves. So when we begin talking about our own life or our own interest or our own passion, we're always naturally going to light up. People don't remember what you say. They only remember remember how you make them feel. And you'll also get him to start feeling, wow, I'm enjoying this conversation so much. People will start saying things like, I feel like I can be myself around you. There's just something about you that's so magnetic. And remember what I said about contrasting the feeling. See, as you're not texting him and not giving him a lot of easy access to you over text, but he's getting all of this amazing uh, experience with you or, um, when he's sitting with you over in person, he's going to be able to contrast how good it feels to see you in person versus how boring and uninteresting it is to not be with you in person because you don't text him. Let's think of where the logic train goes when he thinks to himself, huh, so when I on phone and I text me not have fun, but when me put down phone plan date see in person me have fun on date in person and what do you know you're a happy camper because every two to three days he's begging to see you again congratulations congratulations you see how that works